Marvel Rivals has 33 heroes at launch, and they're all entirely free to play. So figuring out who to main or which character to play first will be pretty difficult. Well, this video will help to remove that difficulty by explaining the playstyle for every single character, helping to find the perfect Marvel Rivals character for you. This won't go into the specific meta and nitty gritty details, because if I did, this video would be four hours long. But I will focus on the overall experience you'll get from each character, and that will help you know which character is best for you in Marvel Rivals. To start with, it's best we understand the three different classes in the game. The tanks, or vanguards, the DPS, the duelists, and the support, or strategists. Tanks in Marvel Rivals offer a role for those who want to stay in the fight for longer and control the battle with their presence. You may not get the most kills and damage, but your abilities will define the flow of gameplay. DPS or duelists in Marvel Rivals allow you to cause as much destruction to the enemies as possible, racking up as much kills and damage as you can, whilst usually having some kind of cool movement, and it's often the most popular role in these kinds of games. Just remember, you will have very little health, and you'll need to be more cautious about how you engage in fights. And then there's supports, which are heroes focused on giving your team a helping hand, keeping them alive longer, or being the web that knits your team together. Many believe the support role to be less exciting, but just know that your efforts on support can help you win games, even if you may not be getting MVP every single match. Let's start with the duelists, the most popular class, before moving on to tanks and then supports. Starting with Black Panther. If you're a risk taker that likes to deal flashy plays in the face of death, Black Panther might be for you. He's hard to master and honestly a little undertuned, but he's still pretty awesome. You'll notice Black Panther doesn't have too many ranged attacks. Instead, he'll be able to leap back and forth to deal melee based damage with the occasional ranged attack from his spear toss. The kick to Black Panther's abilities is that he gets a damage boost when his health is below 100. Pair that with his Vibranium Marks, which will let him recover health from attacked enemies. Black Panther has a very interesting playstyle that forces you to play with lower health than some may be comfortable with. Hawkeye is next. If you played Overwatch and liked Hanzo, you'll like Hawkeye. Or if you like being rewarded for good aim from afar, Hawkeye and Marvel Rivals may just be for you. You can charge up arrows with the bow, but interestingly, the longer you keep your aim on a target, the more damage it will deal, rewarding high skill tracking, which will require a lot of aim practice. Get a headshot with that charged up attack, and you can expect plenty of one shots on other duelists. Hawkeye also has a burst fire and a knockback ability, so there's a small amount of AoE and CC potential with Hawkeye. Next up is Hela. If you're looking for a duelist that has a strong primary attack that lets you focus on dealing damage without too many confusing abilities, Hela may be for you. Hela's main attack has a fast fire rate, really good range, and does great damage, but her damage ability really does require some level of aim skill. And get too close to enemies and your lack of good CC and low health will cause some issues for you. Iron Man is super strong and is always flying around. He's perfect for those that want to always be the playmaker. Besides a variety of long range repulsor blasts, Iron Man has a super powered ultimate called Invincible Pulse Cannon, which can make use of his freedom to fly through the air and obliterate any enemies caught in its path. Flying around can be fun, but just remember you're an easy target as you fly through the sky. Magic. If you're looking for a strong melee hero that can deal enough damage to take down entire teams, magic is for you. Magic can dash very often, meaning she can quickly close the gap between her and enemies, which is important because all of her attacks are melee based and doing more melee damage can make her gain bonus health. Magic also has a demon form, which has more powerful attacks and abilities, rewarding players that play aggressively with her and are always on the lookout to initiate a fight. Moon Knight is next. If you want a duelist with fun movement, Moon Knight may be for you. He has a grapple that flings him into the air and a night glider that lets him glide through the air. Moon Knight can also double jump. When it comes to damage dealing, Moon Knight has a focus on AOE, area of effect damage. His main attacks bounce off of enemies and his ultimate deals large AOE damage, making him great 
at taking down the health of multiple players at once instead of focusing on single targets like a lot of other duelists. Nay more, if you like to stack up tons of damage against enemies and rack up kills safely from the back line of your team, Namor will be perfect for you. Namor's main playstyle is focused on dealing decent persistent damage with his long range spears that can hit fairly easily from a distance. As long as you keep far away from enemies, you'll be fine, but get up close and you'll be an easy target because of your low health and lack of good movement abilities. Psylocke. If you like a high risk, high reward playstyle that gives you opportunities to get up close to the action, Psylocke may be for you. Psylocke's main attack does more damage the closer you are, and successful hits will help recover your health and drop your ability cooldown, rewarding players who are aggressive and are able to have good aim in high pressure situations. Psylocke also has a forward dash that can be used to close distance and even deal damage and she can also enter stealth and get a movement speed boost meaning she's really great for players who can master fast paced movement and high skill aim. Squirrel Girl hasn't been in the game yet so I don't know how she'll fit in the Marvel Rivals meta but she has a bunch of abilities that can ricochet around walls which means you can get some cheeky trick shots off. I feel like she'll be that joke character that everybody underestimates but can still pull off some pretty crazy plays. Spider-Man. If you want to play Spider-Man then well Spider-Man is for you. Yeah, he really gives you that power trip of flinging through the map effortlessly. But actually, when you try him out, you realize it's not effortlessly. It takes a lot of practice to get good with Spider-Man's movement. And if you mess it up, you will get killed. Spider-Man also only does mostly melee damage with some close ranged web attacks thrown in, which means you will need to use good movement to get in, deal damage and then get out. Yes, Spider-Man is a great hero, but he does require a lot of practice. Star-Lord. Star-Lord is a great choice if you're looking for a character that's fairly easy to use, but still has some fun movement mechanics. With Star-Lord, you get a dash and a forward speed boost, and Star-Lord's main attack works better the closer you are, because it's kind of like a shotgun thing, so the best thing to do is to constantly use the movement abilities to dodge back and forth, dealing consistent damage. Storm is the perfect character for those that aren't sure if they want to play duelist or strategist. She can use an ability to switch up the weather, and doing so will give Storm and her teammates either damage boosts or movement boosts depending on what weather mode is active. Storm also has a really good ranged attack and awesome free-flowing mid-air movement, making her a great hero for those that get bored with their feet on the ground. The Punisher. If you just want to shoot guns and not really think about much else, Punisher is for you. To me, the Punisher is one of the easiest heroes in Marvel Rivals and a great starter choice, but that doesn't mean he's boring. He has two normal attacks, which you can switch between a full auto gun and a shotgun. He also has a zip line, a mountable turret, a smoke grenade, and a missile launcher ability. He's all about shooting, and that makes him great for those that just want to shoot things and not think about much else. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is the perfect hero for those that want to target specific enemies to delete them. He has a winch claw grappling hook that pulls in enemies, a powerful two shot pistol and an ultimate that is like a massive grand slam that can be used over and over if you continue to kill players with it as that will reset the cooldown. Now we move on to the vanguards or the tanks starting with Captain America. If you want to feel tough, lead the fight and always be in the center of the action, Captain America will be for you. He's a vanguard with a good balance of pure tankiness and up close brawling. He mostly does melee attacks but can also throw a ricocheting shield. Whilst some other tanks may have better defensive potential, Captain America is really great at launching himself into the action, deflecting attacks with his shield and soaking up damage. Captain America can also constantly sprint faster and that really does allow him to lead the charge into battle. 
Doctor Strange. If you like the toughness of tanks but miss the damage potential of duelists, Doctor Strange is a great tank for you thanks for his wide range of damage based and movement abilities. Doctor Strange has a decent base HP and a large protective barrier shield that can block tons of damage, so he has the tank thing locked down. But he also has a decent amount of longer range protect projectile damage with his main attack, and an ability that lets him float up into the air, and even an ability that lets him create a portal between two locations to quickly let anybody travel or shoot from different sides of the map. Groot. If you want to take more control of the battlefield through AoE abilities and impassable walls, Groot may be for you. Groot is a really awesome utility based tank that can use abilities to change the flow of gameplay whilst also soaking up tons of damage. Groot has two wall abilities that block player movement, abilities and even damage nearby enemies or give Groot more health. Groot can also do long range damage and AoE spells making him overall a great versatile hero. Hulk. If you pride yourself in playing the tank role really well and you're confident in staying alive the longest, Hulk will reward you with stronger and stronger abilities as your life goes on. Hulk has to be probably one of the hardest tank legends to master with three different stages. Bruce Banner, Hero Hulk and Monster Hulk. Bruce Banner is finally the weakest character in terms of health in the whole game, but wait till your ultimate is available and you'll turn into Hero Hulk. This is where you'll spend most of your time with Hulk. His abilities here are stronger, he's tougher, but that's not where things stop. Wait till your ultimate is available again and you'll go into Monster Hulk for a limited time with huge health and even more powerful abilities. Hulk's attacks are also quite limited with a range of leaps, melees and up close AoE. It really is all about building up your ultimate, staying alive for as long as possible and Hulk smashing everything. Magneto. If you want to always feel like you're putting damage into the enemy team without worrying about a small health bar, Magneto may be for you. Magneto was one of the best tanks in the early betas for Marvel Rivals and it seems like it will be that way at least at the launch of the game. And whilst Magneto may not have as many typical tank based abilities, he still has tank health and almost all of his abilities are about sustained long range damage, protecting allies and himself with shields and being a menace at all times. Yeah, he doesn't quite deal as much damage as a duelist, but he can stay in the fight for longer and still provide shields to keep his team up and alive too. Penny Parker. If you've seen the other tanks in Marvel Rivals so far and felt, yeah, not tanky enough, Penny Parker is for you. Not only has Penny Parker got a large amount of health already, but she has two abilities to let her place webs in spider nests that she can heal inside and get extra bonus health from. Penny Parker can also create mines and spider bots that will deal damage to enemies, which will completely annoy the enemy team. Thor. If you want a higher skill tank in Marvel Rivals that can output considerably more damage with good practice, Thor might be for you. Thor has a unique ability set. His abilities all use Thor Force, which is charged by doing melee attacks. You can stack three Thor Force at once, and different abilities require one, two, or three Thor Force to activate. By doing more consistent up close damage, you can use your damage based abilities more often and wreak havoc on the enemy team by staying active in the fight for as long as possible. Venom. If you like the idea of tanks but hate how slow they usually are, Venom might be for you. Venom can burrow underground with one of his abilities to move freely, it can also use a single web swing towards the direction you're facing. For a tank, this movement is pretty handy and allows you to literally be the web that keeps your team together. Besides the movement, Venom has a lot of sustained damage of his abilities, he can slow enemies and generate bonus HP whilst fighting too. Iron Fist. It's hard to pinpoint Iron Fist's playstyle yet because he's not been in past betas, but from gameplay, so far he looks to be a fast paced movement melee character with wall running, quadruple jumping, combo melee attacks that knock back enemies, and a self heal ability. Black Widow. If you like playing Widowmaker in Overwatch or like the idea of being able to scope in and deal massive damage to pick off duelists easily, it looks like Black Widow will be perfect for you. Wolverine. If you want an aggressive melee movement based hero with passive health regen then Wolverine may be for you. Now it's time for the strategists or support heroes. There are a limited number currently in Marvel Rivals and they all feel 
fairly similar in terms of gameplay and playstyle, but let me run through them for you in case there's some that stand out. Adam Warlock. If you hate dying and want a second chance, or feel like you die a little too often in games, Adam Warlock is for you. Every time you do die, you can move your spirit somewhere else and then respawn. There is a cooldown, so if you die too often, then yeah, nothing will save you unfortunately, but you can also use his ultimate to revive teammates, and he has plenty of health healing abilities for his teammates too. Surprisingly, Adam Warlock's main attack is fairly decent and has some good range on it as well. So you won't be only healing or match, and you can help turn fights around with some good aim. Jeff the Land Shark. If you want to be the most annoying thing to break down your enemy team's morale, Jeff might be for you. He is the ultimate troll character in my opinion. On top of plenty of healing abilities, Jeff can swallow enemies and then spit them somewhere else. Maybe off the map, or take one duelist, for example, that's getting a bit too big for his boots and throw them into your teammates. That will definitely shut them down. Loki. If you're looking for a support that can actively heal and fight at the same time, Loki is for you. Loki's main attack will heal allies if it hits them and damage enemies if it hits them. Which means if you just fire blindly into a big team fight, you're going to be helping out your team no matter what. Loki can also allow you to literally turn into another hero and use their abilities for a short time with his ultimate and create an illusion of Loki that will also send out some of his own abilities automatically. Luna Snow, if you like to get involved in big team clashes, but you want to be the one to keep your team alive whilst it happens, Luna Snow may be for you. Her ultimate is a very large AoE healing spell for the whole team that can give damage buffs or health, and just like Loki, Luna Snow can damage or heal with her main attack depending on if she shoots allies or enemies. Mantis, if you want a healer that can heal as often as possible, Mantis is a great choice. When you hit a critical shot or headshot with Mantis's normal attack, you'll gain a life orb. You can stack up to five at a time and Mantis can spend these life orbs to either boost ally damage, heal allies or get a damage boost for herself. She can also use her ultimate to give a large AOE healing boost for all nearby teammates. Rocket Raccoon is the perfect superhero for those that really don't want to play support. He has a lot of damage based potential with his main attack, plenty of movement with a jetpack dash and wall running, a huge damage boost ultimate for allies and even an ability to revive an ally. Despite all that, he's still a support, but sometimes it's easy to forget that. Cloak and Dagger is a perfect choice if you hate being powerless to strong characters and want to be able to shut down ultimates whilst keeping your team alive. Cloak and Dagger is actually a duo of heroes that play as one single support character. You can swap between them at any time and doing so will give you access to different abilities. Cloak mostly has healing based abilities but Dagger can temporarily make his teammates invincible or temporarily blind enemies. Use these abilities at the perfect time to completely stop strong ultimates from characters like Iron Man. Figured out who your main yet? Share your favourite hero in the comments below. And if you're still not sure, don't worry, there'll be plenty more content coming on this channel. So make sure to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio!